Dearly beloved, we come together in the mm-hmm. presence of God to witness the joining together of this man and this woman in holy matrimony. The sacred relationship of marriage was established by God in creation, and our Lord Jesus Christ adorned marriage by his presence and first miracles at the wedding in Cana of Galilee. The Apostle Paul chose marriage to symbolize the union between Christ and his church, and Holy Scripture commands marriage to be honored among all people. The union of husband and wife in heart, body, mind is intended by God for their mutual joy, for the help and comfort given to one another in prosperity and adversity, and when it is God's will for the procreation of children and their nurture in the knowledge and love of the Lord. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but soberly, deliberately, and in reverent fear before God. Enter this holy union, John and Sophia now come to be joined. John Bronner, will you have this woman to be your wife, to live together in the holy covenant of marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her so long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I will. Sophia Palacios, will you have this man to be your husband, to live together in the holy covenant of marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him so long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I will. Who is given this woman to be married to this man? Our Lord Jesus Christ taught us at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this cause, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Consequently, they are no longer two, but one flesh. And at this time, I'm going to ask John and Sophia to to face each other, and they're going to, instead of the traditional vows, they're going to do their own Mm -hmm. own personal vows uh, from their hearts that they prepare. So I'm going to ask John to go first, and then Sophia to follow him with her vows to John. (laughs) Talk loud, talk loud. There we go. (laughs) All right, is this a good voice? Dear Sophia, as we stand before God and our loved ones today, I am overwhelmed with gratitude and joy. You are my biggest blessing from above, and I vow to cherish you every day for the rest of my life. (laughs) In the past, I struggled with words and found it difficult to fully express myself and my love for you um, verbally. Because of my my vocabulary issues, I remember (laughs) our conversation about the beauty of language and your love for other languages, especially because they offer diverse and profound ways to convey that of the word of love. Each with its own deep meaning beyond just love. Since then, I've researched the how some of those words were expressed to me and how some of them are used today. In Hebrew, they say ahavi, which means the deep, enduring love that encompasses the heart, mind, and soul. My ahavi to you is unwavering, and I promise to honor, respect, In Greek, there is agape, the highest form of love, selfless and unconditional. With agape, I vow to put you first. I put I vow to put your needs above my own, to serve you faithfully, and to support you in all that you do. I will forever I will strive to perfect Christ's agape love in our relationship, showing patience, kindness, and forgiveness. In Latin, they use the word amor. <laughs> It's a passionate type of love and a committed love. My amor for you is spiritual and devoted. I vow to be your constant companion, to celebrate you in times of joy, and to hold you close in times of sorrow. 
together we will face life's challenges with courage and strength, always leaning, leaning on our faith in each other. In Latin, this is a hard one. In Latin, <laughs> we have ti amo, ti amo, which, uh, which it speaks to a romantic love filled with warmth and tenderness. Ti amo, and I promise to keep the romance alive in our in our marriage. I will continue to woo you, to suppress, to surprise you, and to make you feel cherished every day. In Spanish, we have te quiero, uh, which is expresses a deep affection and trust. Te quiero, and I vow to build a home filled with love, laughter, and understanding. I will be your rock, your confidant, and your greatest supporter, cherishing every moment we spend together. And lastly, in English, we have I love you, but I like to go by God's definition. So in Corinthians 13, verse 4 through 7, God defines love as, Love is patient, love is kind, it is not angry, it is not hurt, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. I love each of you, and I promise to embody this love in our marriage, nurturing and keeping it with God's grace. <laughs> People keep asking me if I am nervous about getting married so young. Luckily, you have been the easiest decision I have ever made. John, you have accepted the part for me I thought to be unworthy and unlovable. You have met my insecurities and kindness and have helped me to grow to love or to evolve from my imperfections. provided constant reassurance whenever I am in need. Not only are you a blessing to me, but you bring so much light into the world around me. You are generous with your time, your finances, and your love to those around you. I see you be a supportive friend, a supportive brother, co-worker, son, and fiance. I love every part of you, John Bryan. The good, the bad, and everything in between, because it makes up the entire I love the way that you take pride in living and into this life. I love that your confidence does not outshine your beauty. I believe that because our love is rooted in Christ, we will be able to overcome any hardships that this world may throw our way. I pray that our marriage is a living testament of God's love for us. I trust in God's plan for our life and thank him for providing me with such a mercy. With that being said, John, I vow to respect you my actions and to bring honor to your name, to be the crown that adorns your head, to be loyal and faithful to you for all of my life. I vow to encourage and uplift you, to be your helper in times of need, that my words speak life into you and provide wisdom that can only come from the Lord. I promise to nurture and preserve our family, to prioritize our household above any earthly passion and bring peace into our home. I promise to better myself grow mentally, spiritually, and physically to prepare the temple in which the Holy Spirit dwells. I vow to submit to you and to trust your judgment when leading, providing, and protecting my home. Not because I view myself as less, but because God has called me, my husband, to provide so much for me. John Bryan, you are my greatest blessing and to be yours has been a great privilege. Lastly, I promise to love and to cherish you in this life and the next. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and I just commend them for just being a shining example for us, both young and old. So those vows are, they actually were more precious than traditional vows. So I thank them for uh, just expressing their heart and, and just setting a shining example. So the word of God describes the kind of love we are to have each for the other. Love is patient. Love is kind and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant, does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own, is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, 
but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Having this love in your heart, you've chosen to seal your vows today by the giving and receiving of rain. by the size of this diamond. <laughs> so, if you could. so first I want to just to make note of the design of a ring. First of all, it's in the shape of a circle. It represents something that has no beginning and no end as their love. And it's also made out of precious metal. So it's that which is rare found upon the earth as they have found each other, and there's no beginning and no end to the love that they will share. So as you all, later in your marriage, look at these rings wherever you are. Let's remember the covenant in this moment today. So if you'll take this, if you'll hold out your left hand on her ring finger, if you will place it, and as you do, say, with this ring, I be with. With this ring, I be with. individually and put them in the same pot, which represents that which they are bringing from their own homes, their own families, putting it together in their new established family that will go forth on this day. And just as this tree plant has to be tended, so does your marriage. And you are to tend it with love, with respect, with tenderness, and genuine concern for each other's well-being and happiness. So at this time, you can do the unity. Thank you, Lord, for just creating 
them for each other. And Lord, even as we're in a garden today, oh Lord, you created the first man and woman, Adam and Eve, in a garden, oh Lord. And you are the author and finisher of our faith, oh Lord. And this garden is even owned by an author, mm -hmm. Arthur Frank. So we thank you even for the significance of this place, of this day, oh Lord. And we ask you to bless this couple, oh Lord. That you'll bless the love that they share, oh Lord. I pray, Father, that you'll be the unseen guest at every meal. I pray, Lord, that you'll give them wisdom, oh Father, in their communication with each other, oh Lord. That even when their tempers may rise, oh Lord, I pray that the oil of your Holy Spirit, oh Father, would just soothe the situation, oh Lord. That you'll give them compassion for each other and understanding for each other's point of view, oh Father. I pray, Lord, that you'll be present in their home, oh Lord. That when they come in, they'll feel your presence there with them, oh Lord. That they'll know that they're not alone, that you're with them. And I pray, Lord, over the children that shall come forth from this union. We pray, Lord, that you'll lead and guide them as to the number and the timing, oh Lord. That they be blessed, oh Lord, even from the womb, oh Father. That you'll direct them with names, oh Lord, and with talents and careers, oh Father. And with parenting, oh Lord, that even when they don't know in their own wisdom what to do, oh Lord, I pray that you'll whisper your wisdom in their ears, oh Lord. To let them know how to guide your little ones, oh Lord. I pray, Lord, that you'll bless them, oh Lord, in their passion for each other, oh Lord. That you'll never let it run dry. That you'll bless them, oh Lord, in the prosperity of the relationship. That you'll never let them go wanting, oh Father, without providing. I pray, oh Lord, that you'll bless them in the peace of their relationship, oh Lord. That they'll have a peace that others won't understand, oh Father. A smoothness that shall be a light unto others, oh Lord. I thank you that even as young individuals, that they step forward for such a commitment. I pray, Lord, that they'll be role models for a generation, oh Lord, that many times runs from commitment, oh Lord. I pray, Father, that you'll let them be examples to other youngsters, oh Lord, and I pray that you'll just breathe upon them. We thank you, Lord. We pray that every family member and friend present, oh Lord, will support them in their marriage. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. that John and Sophia have given themselves to each other by solemn vows before us and before God as witness and has shown their affection and trust by the giving and receiving of rings and by joining hands, I pronounce that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. You may kiss your bride at this
think would be wise. And if you remember nothing else, and I spent a lot of the old evening, the sermon was amazing, Twelve of Steps, and, and the hope for two. <laughs> and then the sucker fell on a donkey. But <laughs> 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 what I want to leave with you is, is I, you know, I, I consider it as something that I remind myself of all the time. And this is for Mary Buffalo. Ever
Well, turn around and wave bye. Turn around and wave bye. Yay. Enjoy.